year ago, you had to replace three or four starters up front, and it's kind of the opposite situation this year, where everybody's back except uh, except for uh, Naquan, and you you know you've got uh, Drew coming in. I guess how different is the outlook for that front four now than it was a year ago? Well, the outlook is to be the best defensive line we can be, to be the best in the country, best in the Big Ten, and we have a group of guys that have some veteran uh, experience up front. And yes, it starts with the two defensive ends and. Uh, uh, Drew Beasley, uh, Jacob Ponishu. Uh, we also got Jack Camper out there. Those guys have understand what we're asking. And we've brought in Drew uh, Jordan, who is a strong uh, position uh, of defensive end, being able to play both sides and understanding what we're asking them to do. And then inside, hey, we got three guys that played a lot, really four, uh, Jacob Slade, uh, Mr. Mallory. Uh, and we expect a lot of Jalen Hunt. And then we'll have Another young man, uh, Maverick Hanson, that has played some as of last year. But we expect a lot from this group, and uh, we see how it goes. And uh, we are knee deep in the spring ball right now, day four. And with Jacob being a guy who contributed immediately as a as a freshman and you know three year starter, I mean, when you come when you bring a guy like that back for a fifth year, I mean, what are what is the expectation from him with all the snaps that he's played? Well, the expectation is 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 for him to be a leader. The expectations, they understand the process and being able to, to help other guys around them. Uh, the, the experience should be shared and uh, by example and by being able to coach those guys up. That's what we expect. And we expect them to be uh, there to, to have some things that, that at the end of the year, that means that he had a great year, that the ability to, to, to play consistently uh, uh, up front would allow him to have some things that, that comes at the end of winning championships. So we shall see. Thanks, Ryan. Our next question is from Lindsey Helson. Hey, Coach, good to see you again. Um, it's spring again. We're four days in. Uh, you got some veterans, no doubt. But are there some principles that you always have to go back to around this time of year so the players don't get too far ahead of themselves? Uh, everyone's excited to get back. We've had this COVID issue. But are there some kind of mainstay principles you got to always go back to that you learned that have helped you uh, with these guys for the latter part of the season? Yes, the fundamentals. Uh, the ability to play with pad level, the use of your hands, uh, guys understanding what's going on pre-snap, uh, all those things, pre-snap reads, knowing where the back is, know what type of uh, offensive line you're seeing in front of you, learning uh, uh, what's going on with the strength and weaknesses of the te of teams you play against, the individual you play against. So you go back to the principles of the fundamentals, uh, the footwork, the hands, the movement, and those things are more important than uh, playing with power consistently. Right. And just as a quick follow-up, you know, the social media age, I just got to ask, from when you started in this role you go to now, have you seen any kind of influence that social media has played, good, bad, or indifferent, uh, with you coaching up to these guys? Well, it's always reinforcement, more importantly, with the uh, social media. And it still goes back to uh, the simple ways of playing the game. And, you know, the complex stuff stays out. It's the ABCs of the things that, that I see on social media that's really helps reaffirm on what we're doing. We've got a lot of great coaches out there. And uh, you keep it simple up front and understand what's important. And, and the most important things is being able to play with your hands, use your feet, and play with pad level and being aggressive in what you're doing and being repetitive with that in, in a stressful situation. That's what we need to see. And social media can play a good part and a bad part in that. So, but we try to get back down to the groundwork and work from there. The film does not lie. The film doesn't lie. I appreciate that, Coach. Thank you. Our next question is from Nick Mannis with WLNS. Coach, good to see you again. Um, as you were mentioning, uh, you're um, uh, you know knee deep in spring ball, and as you said that, <clears throat> excuse me, there was a level of excitement that, that, that it, it seems you're feeling when it comes to that. Uh, as we're getting towards doing things that seem a little bit more, a little with some normalcy, what's it been like the first couple of days, and, and what are you most excited about about this group? Well, number one, uh, what I'm excited about about the group is the fact that they're a veteran group. Uh, we got some young guys in behind them, but we have the ability to have more people to help coach the group up. And that's what's exciting from the defensive end position with three seniors, four seniors up front to the defensive tackles inside. We have other people other than myself with great examples who have been through uh, the wars and what Coach Tucker wants, you know, being able to play with pad level, being able to be able to motivate OK, being able to understand that it has to be done on a daily basis, on a, every 
uh, play basis and being consistent with it. And that's that's what we like about this group and being in the veteran group. And a quick little follow up, as you were saying, you not just you, but other guys being you know examples. Uh, is it knowing that we're not able to be there with you guys during practices? Are are you getting in there as usual and and putting your hands on the guys and, and having some fun with that during practices? There's no doubt about that. Uh, always want to play with power. And how you use your hands, it takes hands to make where you want to happen up front and the ability to use your feet. But yes. We try to be as you know aggressive and being able to be an example up front, and uh, uh, Coach Burton is still doing that. That's for sure. Thank you. Our next question is from Stephen Brooks. Hey Ron, hope you're doing well. Uh, wanted to ask you about Brandon Wright, a new guy with your group. Um, just where did the idea to move him to D line come from? How did he sort of um, embrace that? I guess, and and just how's he been doing in these first couple of days? Or Brandon Wright is a former tailback, uh, his ability to, to run, his ability to pass rush and lead on third down. Uh, it creates an opportunity because we don't have enough young guys in behind that has his ability and his upside, the use of his feet. And just like a running back, being able to uh, to use proper footwork to get to the, to the quarterback, we think he has a lot of upside in that. And he's embraced that this spring. And uh, he's taken it one day at a time, but he's definitely flashed already. Uh, in the pass rushing situations. And uh, we're, we're glad we have him on our side of the ball. And if I could uh, ask a second question, I wanted to ask you about Drew Jordan as well. Normally, you know, when you have new faces, of course, they're younger guys for the most part. You, when you get a guy new to the group that has his experience level, what has he brought and just what's it been like working with him? Well, different ways of teaching. Um, number one, with the experience in being, I've been a starter coming here. It's a plus for us. Um, he's a stu student of the game. Uh, has great pass rush ability and also plays with great power and just being a great example to the young guys up front and what he's done and how he's been coached at, at other places. And that helps improve and reaffirm what we're teaching here too. So he has been a pleasure uh, on and off the field. And uh, I think it's just like having another coach on the field also. Got it. Thank you very much. Our next question is from Paul with Spartan Magazine. Hey, Ron, uh, thanks for doing this for us. I uh, wanted to ask you about a, a couple guys. Um, Maverick Hansen gained, looked like he gained some good weight in the offseason, and then Deshaun Mallory uh, looks like he's got his body uh, maybe uh, cut up a little bit better. Could you talk about maybe those guys and the offseason conditioning they had and how that might help you out this year? Well, I'll start with Maverick. He's down in some weight right now. He's about 305, uh, 300 pounds, and uh, we thought that was necessary for him to be able to move. He plays with good pad level and strength. He plays with great power, so that's what we love about him. Uh, we have a kid, uh, Deshaun Mallory, who's lost some weight and uh, really put him in, making him a little bit more dynamic. Um, he's lost 25, 30 pounds, and it, it's allowed him to have a lot more movement. Uh, in Deshaun Mallory. And uh, some guys have put on some weight and created some strength. And, and, and our upperclassmen, like a, uh, a Jacob Slade, uh, he's at right at 315, and he's playing with great power and push. And he's just managing that to be able to run with it at all times. And then Jalen Hunt, he's about uh, 315, and he's doing the same thing, trying to sculpture and reduce the fat and have more muscle. And our strength and conditioning has allowed that to happen. And really, our nutritionists, uh, has allowed to see the fruits of that labor uh, already with those guys being able to play with great strength and pad level, but they're, but they're reducing their body fat uh, through this system, and it's been great. And then as a, a quick follow-up, if I could, uh, you had a big group of redshirt freshmen uh, this year from last year. Uh, you know, have you seen have you seen any flashes from anybody? Can you talk about some of the progress maybe some of those young guys have made? Well, we got guys that are trying to flash right now. One of the big ones is Simeon Barrow and the pass rush part of it. Uh, he's very aggressive. He gets off on the ball. Uh, he just has a tendency to understand that he has to play his gap, but pass rush-wise, he has flashed in that. And uh, two young guys, uh, Kyle King and uh, Chris Mayfield, two guys that are on the rise, but they're still learning the system and, 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 and going from there. So they, they're still working, work in progress. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate it. Our next question, we'll go back to Matt with them live. Hey, Ryan, you mentioned a couple of guys uh, past rush wise. I was wondering, you know, with losing the guys you lost before last season, the sacks went down. Um, Mel talked about it the other day. He talked about, you know, needing to bring pressure with the four guys. I was wondering when you get 
if you have like the season you had and you can get a full spring, how much do you think increasing pass rush would be somewhat being able to install what you wanted to install, or is it more just developing, you know, personal, you know, the guys, the, the, the personnel you have, the roster? Number one, being able to install what we want to start, but still go back to the basics of, you know, being able to play a uh, fundamental pass rush, being able to use your hands consistently, developing your first and your second move, and having a spring and is allowing that, us to do that. And we have guys that are, uh, have a great first move, but they're working on their second move right now. Uh, Jacob Planashuk, who uses his hands tremendously well. Uh, Drew Beasley, who plays with great power inside and out. Uh, they're developing that second move now that's going to allow us to gain in more sacks and, and the ability to carry it over by having a spring ball and then having a summer prior to going into the fall. So no doubt about that. We expect that to improve, and, and it starts with the great fundamentals in our pass rush ability. You mentioned Jalen Hunt. Uh, he missed the last, I can't remember how many games last year with what appeared to be an injury. Um, has, he, has he been ready to go, you know, full go in practice yes. and practice all that he has stuff? Not missed the, has not missed a rep. He's going. Uh, very dynamic in his pass rush also. And uh, I apologize for not mentioning his name, Jalen Hunt. Uh, but consistency is what he needs to be. He flashes all the time. And, and uh, I tell you what, he has a great get off. And we want to utilize that as much as possible, being disrupted. So, Keep understanding that the use of his hands, as well as his feet, will allow him to be more productive in the pass rush and, and in the run game. Thank you. We have another question from Stephen Brooks with 24-7 Sports. Sure. Hey, Ron, just before you go, I wanted to ask you about uh, Drew Beasley. With a, with a guy with his experience, when he decides he's coming back again, uh, what, else, what are sort of those next steps for him? I mean, what, what can he still improve on? What do you still want to see from him? Uh, going into this, I think it's sixth year for him, maybe fifth. Well, no doubt. It's Coach Beasley to us, that's for sure. But being <laughs> able to play both inside and out and uh, and being a positive uh, guy in the room, he is a true leader up front in what we're asking him to do. And coming back for a sixth year allows him to improve his pass rush inside and out. As you can tell, we use him both in both places. And I think that's uh, – something that he wants to continue to, to, to make his craft better by utilizing a little bit more speed than power because he plays with awesome power up front. But I tell you what, he does a great job of retaining and, and improving himself all the time. But what I see just from watching him is his ability to coach everyone else up, uh, his ability to, to, to improve and help each and everyone around him. That's what I love about Drew Beasley and, uh, I think he's going to improve as just his consistency in pass rush, but also in first and second down. Great. Thank you. Try to get a couple more in here. We'll go to Rainer Saban with the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Ron. Um, Mel seems to be looking for uh, to build the team from the inside out. How much, you know, is, is that emphasized, I guess, in recruiting and also just in, in, in meetings? Uh, uh, that you have uh, acro across the team? No doubt. Inside out, uh, from the defensive end to the defensive tackle position, we want to get as long as possible. Uh, we want to be as uh, as long as we can as far as height and weight and the ability to prove in our strength. But that's where your football team starts, down the middle. And uh, we're definitely putting the emphasis on that as we bring our, our freshman class in. But the guys that are here right now are the key to what we're going to do in the fall. And that's for sure. Uh, our emphasis will continue to, to recruit and, and, and the defensive line, but more importantly, uh, as a defensive group to be able to improve upon that so we can play uh, championship football. That's the expectation. Coach Tucker expects us to do that, to you know, teach and motivate, okay? And that's what we're doing right now with this group. And uh, it starts down the middle of your defense, that's for sure. And you're correct in that. Thanks. Our last question, uh, we'll go to Jim Comperoni of Spartan Magazine. Hey, Coach, thanks for taking time out to uh, do this with us. Can you give us the latest on Michael Fletcher and how he's coming along? He's doing good. He's running with the second group. He's also in our speed package. Uh, he's gained some weight, and he's playing very strong right now. He's got a great long arm move that he's utilized, and uh, he's been more consistent in this play and uh, starting to make a few more plays and escaping blocks. But what we like is the fact that he's got stronger, and uh, he hasn't missed any reps, and uh, he will see him on the field this fall, that's for sure. And Michael Fletcher. Also, uh, Avery Dunn was on the travel team a little bit last year. Um, how is he coming along? I know you can't probably think of everyone to mention when you mention players, but I want to give you a chance to talk about him a little bit. 
Avery Dunn has come a long ways. He came in here sopping wet, 215, 220. He's now 245 pounds and doesn't look it. Uh, he has flashed, and uh, he's just learning the defense, and he plays uh, with great energy, uh, but he has a lot of upside to him, and he has improved, and he continues to improve his, with his weight and his body. Uh, that, that's what we've, we've enjoyed in seeing him move around. Uh, his pass rush is getting better. And uh, he's learning the defense, and that's what it takes to have a spring like this for him. But he has a lot of upside. Great, thanks. Also, you mentioned Drew Beasley's playing inside. Do you mean some defensive tackle? Is that something new for him? Is that what you mean by inside? Or were you talking about inside pass rush moves? Well, inside pass rush moves and inside, too. That's just the ability to play across the line. He's a young man that's been here six years, and he's played inside and out. Okay. So he's played defense, both as a defensive tackle and a defensive end. Uh, so <laughs> that's just something to let you know that he knows every every part of our defensive front and uh, has the ability to play inside and out. And All right, never know, he could be in there. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Coach, uh, really appreciate your time. We know you got to run to a meeting right now, but thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Appreciate the time, man.